good Wednesday evening to everyone tonight. Um, excited to be with you. Sure wish we were together at church. Um, this quarantine uh, is probably the worst aspect of us not getting to be able to be in church together. Uh, got me a nice haircut today. Got a shave and shower ready to be with you. I even got my dress shirt on, ready to have a little church with you this evening. Go to the word of the Lord, let you know what's going on. And, um, we're uh, uh, moving forward. We're gaining momentum. I'm happy to tell you that the new baptistry came in today, and it's at the foyer of the church right now. And Man, it's beautiful. We're ready for it. We had to talk to Sister Betty Halterman today. And she's going to... Uh, uh, put a coat of stain and some polyurethane on it to help protect it a little bit. But it's really pretty wood, and uh, we're we're excited. I uh, actually climbed in it and sat down in it to test it out. So uh, we're excited. Can't wait to baptize somebody in our new baptistry in Jesus' name. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. We do want to pray first of all for everyone that's sick. Uh, we have several that are sick from this virus. I've talked to some of our elders. I guess I've talked to every one of them at least once, and everybody's doing okay. We have a couple that are, are struggling a little more than others, but no one's in the hospital. And we pray that that continues to be the case. And uh, uh, We uh, 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 are, are doing good ourselves. Uh, we're just having to quarantine, and we're doing the best of that that we can. I do want to say that I'm grateful for those that helped to unload the baptistry today and uh, we'll uh, be showing our appreciation otherwise to them as we can. I want to pray for our country, for the upcoming election, pray for our leadership, pray for some of this division to be squelched and put down and for the church to be able to rise up and be what it needs to be. And I want to pray for our time together tonight. I want to pray uh, that uh, we're able to minister clearly able to receive the word and uh, um, we uh, believe that the Lord is going to keep our church we're going to gain ground and in a couple of weeks we're going to be back together and we'll have Sunday school and we'll have church and we'll have Wednesday night Bible study and, and get everything cranking back the way that it needs to be so if you would bow your heads with us as we pray right now Lord Jesus we thank you for this time to be together tonight thank you for these precious folks that are so faithful to tune in and Stay connected because we have to, Lord. God, we pray for the sick, those that are affected by this virus, either directly or indirectly, for those that are trying to fight through it, for those just, just starting their journey with this virus. I pray, God, you bring everybody through it. Let us stay healthy as, as we possibly can. And I pray for those in our community that are affected by this. And I pray, God, that you'll help us just to keep pressing on, putting one foot in front of the other, stay faithful. In every way, I pray for our country, Lord. I pray for the upcoming election. I pray for our president. I pray, Lord, that your will is done in the election, that whomever wins the election will be because you put them up there, and the church is going to be successful no matter who wins the election because we don't, uh, uh, not saved by the Democrat name or the Republican name or the independent name, but we're saved by the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm grateful for that, that my faith doesn't stand nor fall in the wisdom of failure of men. Pray for our time together tonight. I pray that you'll help us, help us to be effective, help us to be a blessing. Help us, Lord, to minister to the life of someone who's hungry for you and who's ready to grow up in you, building themselves up on their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you will do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, we uh, got a few announcements. One is, as you might have guessed, there will be no in-house service on Sunday. We will be online at 11 o'clock a.m. again. Monday night prayer, Wednesday night Bible study, and Thursday night recovery for next week will all also be canceled. And that's as far out as we're going to go right now. We uh, um, All in-house activities next week will be canceled. We will meet at 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, Sunday morning here on the internet, Facebook Live, uh, for our Sunday morning message and word from uh, myself and uh, 
then uh, we will meet Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here online, online only. No in-house activities uh, next, this next week. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday is all canceled. But we will meet online Wednesday night, just like we are tonight, next Wednesday. We have several that are sick. As I said earlier, I ask you to pray for them. I ask you to call and check on them. If you're able-bodied and you're able to get around, if you can be a blessing to somebody, drop something off, a gallon of milk, dozen eggs, whatever the case may be that they might need, uh, please do that because we, uh, anyone that's sick, we want them to stay home until they get better. And uh, we want them to stay home so they do get better. And uh, not only don't spread the virus around, but uh, uh, don't uh, be subject to, to necessarily to the changing weather and, and being out and about. So I want to remind you that we need you to keep giving. Uh, we can give on Givelify. You can send it in regular mail, Post Office Box 477, River Bend Pentecostals, Post Office Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We have PayPal that we accept through our website. And then if you want to drop it off here at the house in our mailbox, we'd be happy to uh, get it turned in uh, so that the offerings can continue to grow up. We're going to go to the word of the Lord tonight, and we'll be in 2 Peter chapter number 1 again. Uh, we're going to review just a little bit, and then we're going to finish from last Wednesday, uh, the title of our lesson was, And Beside This, and uh, from Second Peter chapter number one, primarily verse number five, uh, but then the ensuing verses build off of verse number five, And uh, but we, uh, we want to go to the word of the Lord with you. We're going to, uh, by the help of the Lord, we're going to uh, uh, empower you, give you the things that you need, Give us the things that we need to go forward in the Lord and to live triumphantly. Um, I will tell you, I plan to be with you tomorrow, uh, sometime after lunch, that we will uh, have another devotion. I'm going to try to do that two or three times a week. I want to stay connected to you. I miss you, but the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost is not hampered or in otherwise hindered by this. This did not surprise the Lord and uh, shouldn't be a surprise to us. Many churches have already felt the, the, uh, uh, the, the pain of this virus, and our church was very, very blessed. But now we appear to have uh, many of our members that have gotten sick, so we're going to pray them through it. But uh, the, the Lord wasn't surprised by it. He knew it was coming. So it, without further ado, we're going to review just a little bit. Uh, I ask you to bear with me uh, because uh, I miss our interaction. I miss our discussion, and we're definitely going to crank that back up when Sunday school starts back up, and, and then when we're able to be together on Wednesday nights. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 5 says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So I want to remind you that it is faith. It's always been faith. It always will be faith that launches us into an arena whereby we receive the Holy Ghost and we begin to learn to follow the leading of the Spirit. It is our faith we've got to protect. It's our faith we've got to defend. It's our faith. It's our faith that connects us to Jesus Christ in any way and then certainly allows us to grow in Him. And beside this simply refers to the things the Spirit wants to add or wants us to add to our lives and lead us in uh, if you'll recall, I used the analogy of completing the recipe. Uh, we, we start with faith. That is our beginning. But then the Lord begins to add things to our lives and uh, uh, complete the recipe. There's natural next steps in fulfilling the will of God for us in this world. And uh, notice that it says, after and beside this, giving all diligence. And you'll recall that I uh, told you that means to give your best effort. There is a mentality that many have with regard to living for God and, and uh, serving the church and, and serving others, etc. cetera. And uh, it is uh, uh, just kind of get by mentality. And, and uh, I, I don't know how that crept into the church, but uh, the, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus paid the price for, the, for us to realize the glory of God. And uh, 
of grace. Uh, this is not for tonight's lesson, but the, the amazing grace of God uh, doesn't come to meet you at your uh, minimum, but it meets you at your maximum. It meets you when we've done all we can, then the grace of God steps in and uh, allows us to go forward. We have to get a mentality of giving our best effort. I remember uh, Brother Huntley preaching a message several years ago where he said the, the greatest detriment or Pentecost's greatest failure is we have gotten used to giving less than our best. And and uh, that right here in the Bible, it says giving all diligence, which means to give your best effort. So the first thing I want to encourage you to do is to to renew and uh, your commitment and your consecration to give your best effort in building upon the uh, your most holy faith, as we've said earlier in the book of Jude, building up on this relationship that we have with God. And uh, it says, add to your faith. And if you remember, I told you that one particular uh, uh, dictionary that I read said that means to ritually furnish. So the things that, that, uh, that we're going to learn about are things that God wants to uh, add to our life that would richly furnish. He's not uh, and my family and I, we shop at Goodwill and, and discount stores, but that's not the mentality that the Lord wants us to have in building this house, which is our body, building our lives up for him. He wants it to be richly furnished and uh, reflecting the grace, the mercy, the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. So we would add to our faith. We're going to decorate this house that God has given us. And uh, the first thing we do is we add to our faith virtue, simply moral excellence. Uh, as simple as I could say it is you begin to do and say good things. And uh, that's a byproduct. That's a fruit of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, even from the beginning. Morally excellent. It's the standard of outward behavior that comes from the inward influence of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, add to your virtue, moral excellence, doing good things, knowledge, and realize that when we do the right thing, there is a lesson learned. And, and even when we do the wrong thing, there's a lesson learned. This word knowledge is defined as functional knowledge that is gleaned from firsthand experience. So whether we fail or succeed, it is a lesson learned. It can be beneficial to us. Failure doesn't have to destroy you. Failure can actually make you, and we've seen that in the Bible. The case comes to mind, of course, is Simon Peter. He failed, terribly failed, he even very quickly uh, failed um, uh, right after say, say, telling the Lord, I'll die with you, and then he went and denied him three times, and the Lord was aware of that, but he didn't damn or condemn Peter, but he allowed that failure to be a, a, a propulsion or propel him into what God would have for him to do. The church has got to encourage the process. We cannot be a part of destroying anybody who fails, but we are in the business of restoration and restoring others, and I'm thankful for that even in my own life. Then he says, add to your knowledge temperance. Now, temperance is simply self-control. Uh, it's an application of the education of the, that we learned, it said that didn't work, that didn't help, that hurt, so I'm uh, not going to do it anymore. Or transversely, that worked, it lined up with the Word of God, and I reaped the blessings from it, so I want to continue to operate that way. So we add to our knowledge uh, temperance. So now we have faith, which is what causes us to come to God. Then we add virtue, which is simply good deeds, good words, good actions, as we're led by the Spirit. And... Uh, then we add to that virtue knowledge, which is the schoolhouse of failure or success. It's the schoolhouse of our life and our experiences build and uh, give us an education. And then we add to that education temperance or self-control, which allows us to align our lives with it. And then we add to self-control patience or perseverance, as one translation says, which simply means once you learn these things and you learn that you can control yourself, do the right thing. Do the right thing uh, all the time. And I, I know I've taken some heat from that, but I believe with the power of the Holy Ghost, we can make the right decision in every situation. Wait. 
pray, listen to God, and he will not lead us in the wrong path. But fortunately, if we go in the wrong path, often the Lord will let that be a teaching and learning experience for us, get us back on the right path, and we'll keep living. A patient trusting that the way of God is the right way. If I say nothing that you uh, retain tonight, know this. The way of the Lord is perfect. The way of the Lord is right. It will always lead you in the right path, and you will always arrive at the right destination. The will of God, not the will of man, but the will of God. And I have to patiently trust that his way is right and that his process works. Then it says, add to your perseverance or add to your patience godliness. Now, I, I really like this definition. Godliness is the resulting development of the things that we've already added to our life. We have faith, then we have virtue, then we have uh, knowledge. And uh, say faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, or self-control, then patience. And all of these things work together to produce godliness in us. It's the development of these attributes that we pursue, that we've hungered after, and uh, that and then it begins to manifest itself as godliness, or uh, uh, the the man we begin to behave in the same manner that the Lord would, and uh, the as we realize that His way works, and all of these things that we add to our lives work, then the fear of the Lord rises, and of course the Proverbs tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, so. Uh, uh, we be, we're really growing, really maturing, and uh, we have a great fear of God and realize that his way is perfect. It's not just a good way. It's not just a good alternative, but it's a perfect way. And then uh, in verse number seven, it says, and then add to godliness, brotherly kindness. Now that's an elevated awareness of God that results in a manifestation of kindness toward one another to the body of Christ, to those you worship with, those in your family, your church, and your friends, your close relationship. There will be a difference in how we treat one another as these we begin to add, richly furnish our life with these attributes that are given to us in 2 Peter chapter number 1. And uh, then after brotherly kindness, which is uh, an elevated uh, desire and action and doing the good things for those that are nearest and dearest to us, then there's charity or love, the love of God, agape as it were. And uh, I thought as I got to this, uh, this uh, addition, this beside this, this richly furnished us with love, that uh, we used to sing, give me that old time religion. And one verse of that said, makes me love everybody. And that is a attribute. That is a reflection of the Holy Ghost in us that we will arrive at. It's not something you know how to do. Love is a choice. And so we have to pray, Lord, I want to add this to my life. And I want to learn to love perfectly. And I want to uh, be, that love to be manifested in my life. And it's love that is offered without any hope of return. You're not looking for it to be reciprocated, but you just love everybody. It's the same love that we offer to, we will offer to others that God has given us and offered us. He loved me when I was yet a sinner. He loved me on my worst day. And uh, so now I'm beginning to reflect Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of who he is. God is love. And the greatest manifestation of that love is Jesus Christ who's given to us. For God so loved the world. So now I'm beginning to become more like Jesus. And at the ultimate of that is perfect love. Perfect love that casts out fear. Perfect love that makes me be like him. Uh, 1 John chapter number 4 said, As he is, so are we in this world. Through perfect love, the greatest witness that we have is that we, through the power of the Holy Ghost, can love everybody. We've got to make sure that we, we demonstrate that, that we demonstrate that love through self-control and through knowledge and through patience. All of these things build up until we love people like Jesus loved people, and that is the greatest fulfillment of the Holy Ghost through us, and by this men shall know you're my disciples because you have love one for another. So nevertheless, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited, so just excuse me. Y'all just y'all know me. If you don't know me, you will know me, but uh, I, I, this is so beautiful the way that it stacks up. 
and builds on top until we start loving people like Jesus Christ and understand love's not a feeling. Love is not an emotion. Love is a choice. We make the decision to arrive here. We build on our do good things and you do good things, then it feels good and then you realize that it works and then you continue to do the right thing and you continue and then now godliness has manifested itself in us and then brotherly kindness. Before you know it, you love everybody and you're affecting your world just like Jesus affected his. So, verse number eight. I want to say right now, if anybody's got any questions or comments, ask them, but don't have time to do that. But I, uh, I certainly, man, I, I miss you guys and miss being together and talking about the Bible. So verse number eight says, for if these things be in you, so if these things are active in you, they don't hide in you. When these things are added to us, they're active in us and abound. And that simply means they're growing. So we, we're not going to arrive Paul said, I count myself not to have apprehended. I'm not already perfect. We're not going to arrive until we're with the Lord. So there, there is an a inspiration of continual growth that, that the Lord's never going to be done with me. And these attributes that I have added to my faith will continue to grow in me. I'm becoming more and more and more like Jesus Christ. If they be in you, so they're active and abound, means they're growing they make you. Now, here we go. The Holy Ghost doesn't make you be good. He leads you in the right path. But when I choose to add these things to my life, they make me that I'm not barren nor unfruitful. And that word barren means inactive. And unfruitful, of course, is bringing forth the wrong things. So I will uh, be active. I won't be lazy. I'll be active in the kingdom of God. And I will bring forth the fruit that is necessary in the kingdom of God. And uh, uh, I will, as I'm growing, I'm learning more and more and more about Jesus Christ. So I'm still reviewing from last week. Um, then verse number nine says, but he that lacketh these things, he that doesn't have these things, he that doesn't have these things active in his life is blind. And cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So that which is ahead of us is vision. That which is behind us is testimony. So now we're blinded from the vision that God has for us. And we're also blinded from where God has brought us from. Here's what I wrote in my notes. When I don't have a vision of where I'm going and I don't have a testimony of where I've been, I've allowed myself to be bogged down, mired down by the, my present. And I've become so consumed with my present that I've forgotten where the Lord's taken me and I've forgotten where the Lord brought me from. We can never forget where we're going and we can never forget where we've been. Psalms chapter number 40, David says, paraphrasing a little bit, we sing this the song based upon Psalms chapter number 40, he brought me out of the miry clay. And they, David says exactly that. He brought me out of the miry clay. It, it would be something similar to our gumbo that's up here in the river bottoms. And if you ever get bogged down in gumbo, you can't go anywhere. I'm calling you today, members of the river band, I'm calling you today, don't get bogged down in your present. God still has a plan for you, and that plan is manifested in where he brought you from, in your testimony. So be aware that this is not our destiny. This is not our destiny. And David said he brought me out of the miry clay, and he established my goings. The miry clay, I don't go anywhere. I just barely try to get along in the miry clay. But in, when he has established my goings, he's put me on the solid rock. Now I can go, and the Lord has ordered my steps. The mire, the present mud, the present mire will consume you. That's not your destiny. It's not your destiny. We've got to have a vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Now think about this. Where there's no vision, the people perish. And of course, in the book of Revelation, we learned these are they that overcame 
by two things, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So without our vision, we'll perish. And without our testimony, we will be overcome. We will be defeated. So uh, don't get bogged down in the trials the circumstances of the present. Remember, they're only serving as an education anyway. It's the schoolhouse. So, Lord, what are you trying to show me here? Maybe the mire is slowing me down. The the bog, the mud is slowing me down. But I got to listen to the voice of God because I know that's not my destiny. My destiny is revival. My destiny is winning souls. My destiny is being effective in the kingdom of God. So, well, there's no vision, the people perish. No testimony, you don't overcome. So we have victory through what the Lord has done for us and where we're going. I cannot. He that lacketh these things, verse number nine, is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So verse number 10, wherefore the rather, rather than being blind, rather than being inactive and unproductive and lacking the essential attributes of, of normal, healthy spiritual growth, which is add to your faith virtue, add to your virtue knowledge, add to your knowledge uh, uh, temperance, uh, and then add to temperance patience, and add to patience godliness. All of these things, rather than not having them, so now you've got them, Give diligence. There's that word again, diligence, but it means a little something differently. It still means give your best, give your best effort, but it's more of an attitude, a mindset, than it is an action. Because the truth is, earlier in our relationship with God, we gauge ourselves off what we're doing. But as we mature in the Lord, we gauge ourselves off what we know, what is in our mind. And we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So as we begin to think like Jesus, and uh, uh, we begin to grow and become more like him, and then we have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So it's a mindset, and uh, it's the mindset behind our best effort, and no longer are we striving to produce best effort. No longer is it wearisome to do the work of the Lord, but we're actually growing in the fertile field of uh, faith. We have grown building up yourselves on your most holy faith. You've grown up to be a house uh, for the Lord. So, so give diligence. We've got to give our best. We've got to give our best, and we've got to know we're giving our best. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 4 says, Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. We have a place we can go in Jesus Christ where we know, just like Nehemiah said, I can't come down, I'm doing a good work, where we know that through the love of God, we are fulfilling our destiny and our purpose. And uh, so... Then it says, give diligence, look here, to make your calling and election sure. Now let me share something with you about this. Calling is given to everybody. Jesus Christ came so that everybody might follow him. Not just the 12 disciples, not just the pastor, not just your preacher. The calling is to everybody, come and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. This always, this word always refers to a divine call. It is coming from heaven, coming from God, and it's calling to everybody. I would submit to you for your thinking that every human being today has an aching inside of them to be reconciled to Jesus Christ. And we fill it with so many different kinds of things. And uh, that's why we have addiction. And that's why we have people hopping from bed to bed, house to house, is because they're trying to satisfy that longing. Uh, we were created to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, but sin got in the way and separated us from him. So we're called back to him. Everybody, every human being is called back to Jesus Christ. So everybody's got the calling. But then it says, and your election, and that word election means determined and chosen by God. Now, 
let me just say this as simply and quickly as I know how. The qualifications for making sure you're chosen are given in 2 Peter chapter number 1. We have a responsibility to be obedient to the word of God. It's not a suggestion. It is the law of God. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. I taught you or ministered to you Sunday morning of Jesus Christ facing the devil, and he used the word of God from the book of Deuteronomy three different times. He quotes scripture. David said, I hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. My, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we come full circle. Everything you need. Remember verse number three said, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto uh, life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. The qualifications for being chosen are given here. The book of Revelation tells us, and I just made a quick note here. It said, but he's coming for a bride who has made herself ready. Isaiah chapter number five he uh, says, I sing to my song, my well-beloved, a song of the vineyard. Uh, it's, a, it's a type of, of God in Israel. He said, I've done everything. I've done everything that I can for you. I've given you everything I need. There's not a miracle out there. There's not a prayer answered. There is not a supernatural manifestation that will do for you what obedience to the word will do for you. We cannot over-spiritualize uh, uh, things. We've got to get back to A, B, C, D of living for God, which is simply obey the word. Now, that causes something to rise up in us that we don't like. Uh, if you remember in Acts chapter number 3 verse num and chapter number 4, when Peter began to tell them that he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, they gnash their teeth and begin to try to kill him because it's our human nature to buck. It's our human nature to rebel. But the Holy Ghost brings you into submission. So once we're filled with the Spirit of God, we are positioned to become <coughs> excuse me, what God wants us to become. So this calling is for everyone. The election is those determined and chosen by God. You remember that when Jesus is teaching, and I believe it's the book of Matthew, that the man shows up at the wedding without the right garment on, and he was cast out. We choose to put on the right garment. We choose to put on, and it's what's given to us in the word of God. We have to make a conscious decision and effort to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, John chapter number 1. So we have given the qualifications for being chosen in 2 Peter chapter number 1. Build on, add these things to your life. Richly furnish your life with the truth of God. And he, he gives you the Holy Ghost so we can receive that. So uh, I, ho I hope I, I made that clear. The calling comes to everybody. The choosing only comes to those who made themselves ready, have submitted themselves to the word of God, to the law of God, to the truth of God, and taken the word and applied it to their lives. He told us, if you uh, hear my words and don't do them, when the storm comes, you're going to fall. But if you hear my words and do them, the same storm's going to come, but you're going to stand because you're built on a solid foundation, the word of God. So that leads me right to the next thing. He says, make your calling and election sure. That simply means solid and settled. When, when folks die that we don't know where they're going, which is virtually everyone, but we like to say they're in the hands of a merciful God. Basically what I'm teaching to you tonight is you don't have to leave it up to God. He's put it in our hands. He's given us the word of God. We don't have to leave it up to him. We can, through the word of the Lord, it tells us, make our calling and election sure. We can be settled in our mind and heart to know that when the trumpet sounds, we are going to be with him because we have aligned ourselves with the word of God. And then he says, if you do these things, now this is the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 10, if you do these things, you shall never fall. Man, that's an incredible concept. It almost seems like it's, it's, it's unreal, but the Lord says just follow these steps. Follow these steps. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by faith. 
not by works, by faith. But then the Holy Ghost leads us into truth. And it, the Lord wants you to succeed. He's not looking to, to glory in anyone's failure. He wants us to succeed. And he gives us everything we need to do that. If you do these things, you'll never fall. It simply means you'll never get off track. You'll never fail. You'll never stumble. I'm going to close with this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 and 17. 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That simply means God breathed it. So the same breath that gave us life gave us the word. And it is, it is our life. You are what you eat. We got to eat the word. We got to take the word in us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That's teaching. For reproof, that is don't. Correction, do. So doctrine teaches. Reproof says stop doing this. Correction says do this. And instruction in righteousness says stay doing this. So doctrine tells us what to do. Reproof tells us. Stop doing that. Correction says start doing this. And instruction in righteousness tells us how to stay in the right path. Look here in verse number 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 17. After saying all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Look at this. That the man of God may be perfect. Now that word perfect simply means fully mature, fully grown, fully functioning, fulfilling the call of God, the election, the cho choosing of God in his life, that the man of God may be perfect. Look at here. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Everything we need, God's given it to us. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. I want to remind you that there's no Sunday service. I'm going to ask you to please share this video on your Facebook page and, and otherwise if you can. Uh, there will be a new devotion coming tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. And uh, bow your heads with me as we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've given us. I thank you for the hope that I have. I thank you for the truth that you've shared with us, that I don't have to live my life falling short. I don't have to live my life inadequate, but I can be full. That you promised to give us that full life, that abundant life. And it comes through submitting ourselves and applying the word to our lives in every way. I pray for everyone that tuned in tonight, that tuned in live, that will be watching later. I pray, God, that you will minister to them through the power of the word. Lord, the word is where we find the words of eternal life. And it's the word that testifies of Jesus Christ. And it's the word that gives us everything we need in order to make it. Not only to make it, but to live an abundant life, an overcoming life, a victorious life. And not only in our own life, but in our others, beginning with our family and then launching out into the entire world. You want to change the world, save the world, reconcile the world unto you by us. I thank you, God, for that word you've given us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you all. Thanks for being with us tonight. See you soon.